Hello everybody, you're watching The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Melwood, hit the like button. So here's what happened to me in 2008 and happened to roughly six million people, six million homeowners, six million families went through this. So the recession hit, um, well first there were several things that uh, w there was a strike in show business in 07 and 08 that really started I was making money doing game shows and then doing stand-up comedy because I was making on game shows so there was a strike that really hurt that aspect of the business then the recession hit uh, and one of the things that hurt me and a lot of comedians you might not know this was comedians make a lot of money I made a lot of money every year in November and December doing office Christmas parties and an, an office and companies would have, they'd spend these nice money on Christmas parties. And in one night, you could make what you could make in a week or in some cases, a month. So the Christmas party business was big and I, I made for 15 years, I made a lot of money during Christmas parties. I'll give you a great example. I was working in a casino in uh, Lake Tahoe. This guy and his wife saw me and he says, I own this um, court reporting business I want you to do my Christmas party in Los Angeles. And I did it and I made great money. And other people would, I got hired, especially working the casinos, you know, uh, event planners and stuff would see you and hire you for their event. But they did a lot of, the, all the companies spent a lot of money on holiday parties. So when the recession hit in September of 08, money was already tight because of the strikes. Um, the, um, no companies spent any money. All the Christmas parties dried up. So I had no work. It all got canceled, like literally almost 10 to 20 grand worth of work. Somewhere in that neighborhood was gone, disappeared overnight. Um, and I was paying my mortgage later and later in the month. And I, I was told if you get the 30 days, don't be less, more than, don't be more than 30 days late, it won't affect your credit. I had very good credit at the time and an over 700 credit score. So the recession hit, Bush put a bunch of, I, I believe, $700 billion into the, uh, for stimulus. And my mortgage was, the, was with Indy Mac Bank and I called person on, on the phone and I was like, um, or they called me, they're like, you're getting late, we need a payment. I said, I don't have the money. I lost a bunch of work. The recession is killing me. Um, and he said, well, I'll be honest with you, sir. Once you're more than 30 days late, then we can help you. So actually, you should wait till next week. An IndyMac employee said, I wish to God I would have recorded this phone call. But this is what this employee, and I don't think this guy was lying to me. I think this is what he was told to say. He was some $10 an hour phone bank person. I'm not mad at that guy. And he said, if you wait till after 30 days, then all this stimulus money that President Bush just put out there, this will help you out. I said, okay. So I waited till after 30 days and I called them and, I, and they said, oh, we're gonna put you on a forbearance. We've just heard that term again, haven't we? Forbearance they're talking about. Pay attention to what happened to me in 2008 because they are going to do this again with this bullshit coronavirus stimulus plan that will actually take more people's homes away. But pay close attention. They said, we're putting you on a forbearance. What that meant was they cut my mortgage in half. And they said, you got to pay half mortgage for three months. At the end of the three months, we're going to restructure your loan. We've got millions of people are in your boat. So we're, we're backed up on paperwork. We'll restructure your loan and get you a lower mortgage payment so you can stay in your house. Because the whole plan, as George Bush said, to keep people in their homes. America doesn't want to, the American government is not in the business of buying people's homes. No, the American government isn't, but the banks are. So I even then rented my condo out. I rented it out. And I was like, whew. now with the rent the cut in half, the rent that the people, that this woman was paying me, she was some corporate attorney, was covering everything. And I was like, oh, good. Oh, at the end of the three months, great. At the end of the three months, they went, oh, you don't qualify. And now you owe us three months in mortgage because you have been paying half payments. You are behind now. And they said, and I was like, wait, what? And it was like, I couldn't get a straight answer what the amount was. 
I'd get a statement in the mail saying it was the one number. I'd go to the IndyMac website, it would be a different number. I'd talk to someone on the phone, they'd look at my account and say it was a third number. And I was like, what? So Obama gets sworn in January of 2009. I'm like, finally, good. This is Bush's bullshit. That's what I thought. That's what I was told. Obama's going to save the day. This is crooked Republican. Only the Republicans are crooked with the banks. So of course, Bush's stimulus plan doesn't work. It's a scam. Obama's going to save me. That's why I voted for him. He gets sworn in. Same thing, new stimulus plan by Obama. And I call them up the, the, the thing again and they're like, um, they're like, well, you're, I'm, you're three months behind now, so you definitely qualify. Same thing, forbearance plan. They cut my mortgage, not in half, but by they cut it by about 40 some percent. So almost half, 42, 40, somewhere in there. And I was like, okay, same thing. At this point, I had a tenant renting it. So I was like, my wife and I moved into a little one bedroom apartment and the rent and with this new lower payment and they're gonna, I just like, just restructure the loan. I'm not trying to get out of paying you, just restructure the loan. And what they said, we're gonna restructure your loan, pay down your balance so that your, your monthly payment is lower. That's how we're gonna keep people in their homes. That was the plan. Obama put in $700 billion into, his, into the stimulus, right? You wanna take a guess what happened after the end of these three months? Oh, how did you figure that out? Yes, they did the exact same thing you don't qualify. Now you're six months behind on payments. And it was, it was like 15, 20 grand. It was crazy what they were saying I owed them. And I was like, what? They did this one more time. So twice under Obama, once under Bush. And I was like, what do I do? So a friend of mine said, call a lawyer. I called this law firm there said, oh yeah, here's what you do. Stop making payments. I said, are you sure? The lawyer said, yes, yeah, stop making payments. Okay, when you get near your eviction, that's when they'll make you, that's when they'll let you stay, stay in your home. <laughs> that didn't work. I filed for bankruptcy. And I found out later, One West Bank, then headed by our good friend Steve Mnuchin, what they did, along with several other companies, they bought my mortgage and millions of other people's mortgage for about 30 to 40 cents on the dollar. So they bought my mortgage for about 30, 40% of what it was worth. And they looked and I was in a nice neighborhood. So they said, if we kick this guy out and resell his home, we'll make a profit. I had a friend of mine who lived in a neighborhood that got way overvalued and he was way underwater. And that neighborhood, they were like, so they, they actually gave him stimulus money to restructure his loan because he wasn't in that great of a neighborhood. But they wanted me out. So they got me out and I found out the judges were on the take from the mortgage companies, some lawyers. I don't know specifically if my lawyer was, but I had heard that lawyers were on the take. And they used stimulus money to kick me out of my house sold my house, made a profit from it, didn't help me stay in my home, and they did this for upwards of six million houses, homeowners. Which, it's not six million individuals, that, that's 10, 15, 20, who knows how many people were affected because there's families. I just was a guy, but I was married at the time, so it affected two people in my home. Imagine pe people with a wife and a uh, husband and wife and a kids and what, three, four, five people were affected. And they did that with taxpayer money. And Attorney General Kamala Harris had all of this evidence from people like me and hundreds of thousands of other California homeowners. One West Bank was a California bank. They had evidence to prosecute. This was a criminal. And they said they had emails, all this stuff saying, yep, we're going to go kick people out of their homes and use government money to do it. And she wouldn't prosecute. Steve Mnuchin donated to her campaign in 2010. And then when she ran for Senate, he donated to her campaign again. And now he's Secretary of Treasury. So here's what they're doing now with the stimulus plan. They're giving people loans and they're gonna, they're gonna do the same thing. Now they're gonna do it with businesses and homes. We are currently in the lowest home ownership since the Great Depression, pre-coronavirus. Our home ownership numbers were lower than the Depression pre-coronavirus. So what this stimulus plan is, $2 trillion spread out to us, but $4.25 trillion for the banks. So 
I was talking earlier, I have a, if I can, get, I can get a small, I'm a business owner, right? I have a little corporation that runs my business. If I get a loan and I keep my employees, I, according to them, I don't have to pay it back. It ends up being more like a grant, provided I don't lay anybody off and I keep people hired and working. Okay, that seems fair. The big corporations, they don't have to pay it back whether they lay people off or not. What do you think they're going to do? Keep the stimulus money, fuck you worker, lay you off, outsource the jobs or hire people for less, and they're going to do that with your business. You're a small business. They're going to do that. The banks are going to do that with your businesses. They're going to do that with your homes, with your condos. They're going to do that with everything. That what Obama, And what Obama could have done in 2009 is given money directly to people and said, here, they figured it out. It was something in the neighborhood. All the stimulus money in 2009, 2010 that they put out there could have paid each working adult 70 grand. If I would have gotten a check for 70 grand, I would have taken the 20 or whatever they said I owed, gotten current on my mortgage, so that money would have gone to the banks, right? Would have paid off my credit cards, that would have gone to the banks, restructured my loan, lower interest rate, take some of that money, invest it. Maybe I would have bought a new car or something. Because remember the car thing? That's what it could have done. That's what the stimulus ban should have been. They should have locked down more, no mortgage, no rents, no, no bills, no fees, and here's money. Just watch. And when we hit 30% unemployment this summer, and everyone's going to have, what, a $1,200 check? Maybe they'll give us another $1,200 check if we're fucking lucky. If our corporate overlords, please, please, please spit in my face and throw a little crumb in my face, please. That's what that $1,200 is. They're going to grab up more property, more land, more businesses. Small business owners are going to be crushed. Everything's going to be a Best Buy and a Cheesecake Factory. Everything. That's what they want to do. They want to own everything. So that's how I got screwed 10 years ago, and that's gonna exactly how I got screwed and millions of others got screwed. This is how they stole my home. Both parties stole my home. They let the bank steal my home, and both parties just again let uh, the bank steal all of our homes and businesses. If it ain't time for a general strike, I don't know, I don't know what is. I don't know what it's gonna take. 80% unemployment? 10 million people die from COVID? What's it going to take? Because here's the other thing that's in this bill. The testing for COVID-19 is free, but guess what? If you have to go to the hospital for COVID-19, you're on your own. So anybody gets sick from this has to go to the hospital, even if you survive it, which is if you have a high risk of, you have a high rate of survival, unless you have pre-existing conditions, you're still going to get stuck with an Obamacare. Even if you have, I have a shitty Obamacare. If I get COVID-19 and I just have to go to the hospital for two weeks, I'm going to come out of there with a twenty, thirty thousand dollar hospital bill that I cannot, that I can't pay. That's going to happen to millions of Americans. Some people are going to get it. It's not going to affect them, and you're just going to have mild symptoms, and you're going to be done with it. But what about all these other people? And the hospitals are overrun. What are we going to? What are we going to do? This is going to be. You're going to see it. More people are going to file for bankruptcy. We already had people filing for bankruptcy. Health bills were the medical bills were the number one cause of bankruptcy. What's it going to be now during the middle of a fucking pandemic? The way Obama, I mean Bush too, but maybe Obama could have done way more. It happened in the last several months of Bush's sec last term. Obama had eight years; he could have fixed everything. Joe Biden was his fucking VP. You know that rapist with dementia, that dumbass neoliberals think is going to save us from Trump. He's going to get COVID nineteen, or they're going to point out his dementia, and then Mario Cuomo is going to step up. And Bernie, who's the most qualified to do this, won't fight back hard enough. He won't call them out for this shit. That's my problem. That's my problem with this two-party system. That's why the progressive movement should start really getting together. Bernie still has a chance. Great. I hope, I hope he can pull it out. Who knows? Anything, anything's possible. Anything's possible right now. I'm all for it. Bodies are going to start stacking up in the next couple months, and they're going to, they're going to hang Trump for that, and rightfully so, because he's an idiot. He got rid of the pandemic task force <laughs> two years ago. He's like, oh, we're all going to start partying come Easter. He's a moron. They don't know what they're talking about. Um, 
But, I mean, 96-0, 96-0 in the Senate. So that's what happened to my house, and that's what you're doing now with this, this stimulus plan. But let's all hope $1,200 can pay for three months of bills. Provided your monthly, total monthly expenses are only $400, that $1,200 is going to be fine. Good luck. That's what the federal government just told us. You're on your own, motherfuckers. Hey, everybody. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing, many of you, every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.